What's up? We got to talk about this crypto dip. What's going on? Let's get into it. Throw a one if you're ready to get into it right now. What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. We got to talk about this crypto dip. Is the Bitcoin bull rally over? Or are we, you know, are we in for a bit of a bounce? What is going on right now? Let's dive right on into it. Looking right here, we're at a 75 on the greed metric, which is actually quite good in these bull markets. Because uh, not only what was it was about two weeks ago, we had this all the way up here in the 85, 87 range. So this is nice to see that we're getting a little cool off on this over exuberance that we've been seeing in this market. Now, when we zoom down just a little bit, we can see in the last 24 hours, oh my God, Bitcoin's crashing. Well, let's look at this. It's only down 0 0.68, 0 0.7, less than 1%. Let's call a dip what it is. Let's not call everything that moves to the downside a crash. Let's be more realistic about our numbers here. This means that we're still seeing opportunity. The question is right now, we're gonna dive into to this today. Do we still have incredibly bullish metrics showing that we're gonna have a huge pump to the upside? Or are there signals in the chart showing that we are about to break down for lower price action? This is what we're gonna be diving into today. So if you can get behind that, every single one of you, I just wanna say right now, big love to every one of you. We got over 20,000 subs over the over last night, over the last 24 hours. So big love to each and every one of you. You've all been here from the get-go, and I just want to say I appreciate you. So do some love right now on the channel. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't yet, hit that little bell so you get notified when we go live because we're sharing more and more content, a more wide variety of types of content on this channel, not just Bitcoin and Ethereum and these top alts, but we have that Crypto Gen show on Mondays with Rodney. Uh, we also are doing these interviews that as often as I can get them booked and uh, have people show up uh, because schedules are crazy. I'm getting some really big names in and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a balancing act with the schedules and stuff. But I'm trying to do uh, good interviews that get released on Sundays so we can talk about where this is all really going. So if you can get behind that, I'd appreciate you if you just hit that hit that little uh, that ding a ling bell so you get notified. And if you don't know who I am. Welcome to the show. My name is Kelly Kellum, the director of BitLab Academy. We have an entire online course ecosystem as well as a premium community, as well as these BitLab memberships that are here on uh, YouTube. And if you are a member here on YouTube, you will get access uh, not only to some of the things I share in the premium Discord, but also those premium member streams. We have another one that's happening tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you join us here in the BitLab now let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that we want to talk about today. We got that CPI data. March CPI inflation rate rises to 3.5% above expectations at 3.4 and people are losing their minds. We can see it if we actually come over here, I'm gonna pull up a new chart. If we actually come over here and look, let's go down to traditional, uh, where is it at? Load layout and trad markets right there. All righty. Now looking at what's going on here, I mean, this is feeling a little scary. Uh, we, uh, we see NVIDIA having a little bit of that pullback. When we come down here to the Dow Jones, look at this, very toppy signal here. We have a nice trend line here that was broken through and uh, signaling that there may be some more downside in action. We see the VWAP down here actually came up and is already rolling over. Could not even close this negative spread uh, to, to get uh, better prices for shorts to the downside. This is showing that the bears are very much in charge as it stands right now, the question's going to be, and yes, this is a crypto channel, but we got to look at these other traditional uh, economic indicators as well. So we have an idea of where this risk narrative is going. And when we look at this and we see that the bears are in control, the question is always going to be, is this a trap? Is this a trick? Is this an overreaction on this news that's going to be eaten up very quickly by the bulls and sending it back higher? It's all going to be dependent on what all this tonality is from these different Fed speakers, as well as uh, you know, the response in terms of uh, what's going on with monetary policy globally and global liquidity. So let's keep our eyes open. Let's keep our data present and let's try to acknowledge our emotions so we can act reasonably, not react from our emotions, which is essentially what they're trying to do to us here. So when we come back over to this data, let's just go ahead and look at this 3.5. 
So core CPI inflation was 3.8 above the expectation of 3.7, blah, blah, blah. They're all lying. And we know we're lying. They, we know they're lying. Because look at this. While CPI inflation says it's 3.5%, inflation is much higher in many basic necessities. Car insurance, 22.2%. Transportation inflation, 107 Car repair inflation, 8.2%. Hospital services, 7.5%. Homeowners, 59 Rent inflation, 57 You tell me where on this list, anywhere on this list, it says something at the mark of 3.5 or below. I'll tell you right now, you can't because they're freaking lying to you. They're fudging the numbers to make themselves uh, look better. And this is why they are so scared of Bitcoin because you cannot fake the data on Bitcoin. And I have some great on-chain charts that I'm going to share with you right now. And again, as you all roll in, I love you. I appreciate you. We're all in this together. I'm in this market to make money. And I'm in this market also with the core tenant of myself to drive positive community value. I want you all to make it. We can all make it equally. There's going to be people that don't have education in this space. And I hope that we can reach out and tap them and say, hey, here's some ways you can read some signals. Here's some tools. Here's some resources. Here's how you can be in this market to make money because we can do this together. Yes, I want to make money in this market, but I want you to make it too. Just because I make money doesn't mean that you can't also. The truth is this market is a behemoth, not just Bitcoin, but the global market with equities and assets and traditional finance and CFI and DeFi and all the FIs out there. I want you to be rich FI. That's what I want you to do, but we got to do this together. Let's figure out how we can read these signals and see what's going on because the government's lying to us. And this is one of the reasons why I'm so... I'm so, oh, I'm so sucked into this crypto market because it gives us another opportunity. It gives us another path. If you can get behind that, that's what we're talking about. Ethan, Ethan Smith says, we're winning as a team with the BitLab Academy. Shout out. If you've ever learned anything here at BitLab Academy, if I've ever brightened your day, if I've ever encouraged you or inspired you in any way, throw a one in chat right now. Let's, let's get it going. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what we got to talk about because we got a lot of charts to cover. I got to drop this alpha on you guys, so let's do it. I just want to remind you all, this is that chart, that market cycle trading cheat sheet. Where are we right now? If I had to guess that we'd be somewhere about right here. This leads a lot of just arbitrary looking upside, but let's see why I said this. Remember, I shared this chart. Yeah, I shared it with you guys yesterday, but this is from April 2022. So two years ago, I was sharing this chart showing on a sort of the breakdown into a bottoming area. The 1.618 is roughly about where one of these moves the upside will go. Well, let's see how accurate this arbitrary chart was two years ago to the behavior of the charts today. Well, if we look at this right here, here's that massive downtrend in price action. Well, let's look from this drop from here to the bottom side right here. We drew, let's just go ahead and redraw it. In case you don't believe me, it's all good. Don't trust, verify. So let's delete that Fibonacci. And if you want to pull up the Fibonacci, all you got to do is click on the chart. That's right, one click. Now do Option F if you're on Mac. If you're on PC, press Alt F. You see, now I'm not touching. Now I'm just going to go down and tap the screen once. Move the mouse, tap the screen again. There, you got a Fibonacci. Another way you can do it is come over here on the left, one, two, third one down, and Fib Retracement. If you put a little star on it, It'll stay there. And you can also pull it up down here on this little star, this little basically uh, favorites tool list here. But we got the fib. Let's go ahead and move this to where that bottom is, just like this. And I just want you to notice what we talked about on the breakdown into the bottom, the expansion up here into the 1.618. The fib extension shows 1.618 right here. And you see this is where the price action has some trouble and came back and pulled. Well, let's look at what's going on on this picture. Price action pushed up. Yeah, overshot a little bit. And look at this. It rejected directly at the 1.786, and it's been consolidating right at this 1.618. It's as if markets do the same thing regularly, or they rhyme with each other in terms of these trends. And once we understand that, we can stop being held hostage by a dip in the market because we could say, oh, I, I thought something like this might happen, and here's my plan to execute a good, healthy trade with data behind it, not just my emotions. 
Now, as we're looking right here, we're going to get into a lot more TA here in a bit, but I just wanted to point out, these things are telegraphed into the future based on price action in the past and based on human behavior. So when we understand that, all this is, if you take your, your, your relationship with money out of this, you take the trauma from your, feel, your feeling of insecurity, you take your trauma from the feeling of lack of acknowledgement, I'd never win, I'd never, uh, let all that shit go. Look at the data. Market cycles tell us that these things regularly happen and now we can have a plan. So let's go ahead and go through this. Demand is the name of the game right now. This is what's different. I even said so in my tweet here. This time is different. Yes, we have capital flows, but what do those new capital flows represent in this market? Those new capital flows in this market with all these ETFs and new ETFs launching over in Hong Kong and new Bitcoin standard regulations uh, or practices for Bitcoin treasuries for corporations in Japan. All these things are stacking up to something that we're seeing in the data, and that is demand for the first time in history is outpacing significantly the issuance, but also what's going on with just available supply. So this may explain why, yes, we overshot a little bit. And if we talk about where we're at in, re in regards to the halving, which is going to be an only a matter of a couple days, which is going to be about, about right here, option V, we're so close to that halving. We've never had all-time highs before the halving before, but we've also never had this story of this huge, not only increase of demand, but an absolute explosion and acceleration of demand. At the same time, we're about to get a reduction in new supply. So you tell me, what direction do you think Bitcoin's going? Does it mean we can't have some dips along the way? No. But once we understand this, now we can understand that those dips are absolutely buying opportunities. It just all comes down to what your conviction is to hold through those shaky times. Now, looking at this, whales. Whale holdings and percentage, uh, the monthly percentage change. We're seeing a huge, huge increase here, similar to what we saw back here. And remember, I am still of the belief that, yeah, market cycles, whatever they did is what they're supposed to do, sure. I still believe, maybe I'm too bullish, maybe that's my bias. Still believe that this market cycle was cut short. Still believe that this would be more relative to what we're seeing back here that still had this huge upside. Of course, we did not get that here. We had a lot of things that plague geopolitical, uh, uh, geo governance in regards to what's going on with Bitcoin at this level. We had the Chinese mining ban come in here, uh, right here, which has also drove this down. There was no new buyers here. There was just not, a, uh, there was not any people willing to sell because the majority of people in the market was looking at all the data and saying, this should be going much higher. And once, uh, once we didn't get that, the market obviously collapsed. We also saw a reduction in global liquidity at that time, which means the, the, the thermostat on market started turning to risk off. So a lot of things were at play in this cycle. Where we're at right now, and we understand that we're having all this new demand come in, we're seeing you know, a huge reduction of available supply and exchanges. We're seeing uh, the... the narrative and the understanding of bitcoin is growing slowly but once this starts really moving this is going to absolutely change the lives of those people who have been stacking along the way i think we're in for a doozy i'm curious what you guys think now looking at this chart right here we can also see that the whales are the only ones furiously buying all this blue See, this is a plus 10,000, 1,000 to 10,000, 100 to 1,000. These aren't just numbers. This is the size of Bitcoin wallets. On-chain data gives you the ability to look on-chain and see how many Bitcoin are held in particular wallets. So you can tell when a whale is stacking or uh, basically accumulating or distributing, aka adding to their wallet or selling out of their wallet. You can see all these things in real time. Basically, every time blocks print, we get an update on what that on-chain data is. You can't do that with traditional assets. You have to wait for quarterly earnings reports or your annual reports. We have transparency here, and we can see for the first time in history, we can actually see that, oh, what are the whales doing right now in this moment and this time period? Not in this quarter. What have they been doing this last week? Well, we're seeing that this blue line, this blue block on this cohort right here, blue one is accumulation, zero is distribution, this is the only one that's blue. Whales are buying. 
what are you doing? So know that we can look to what the big dogs are doing. Let me put it this way. If you are overweight or you're tired and you just feel like you're weak and you look at a friend, you have two different friends. You see one is working out all the time and they have an incredible physique and you see another one only eating Taco Bell and McDonald's and they're out of shape, unhealthy. Would you follow the behaviors of the person that has the body image in terms of the physical body structure that you're going after? Or would you mimic the person that has something that you're trying to move away from? The same thing is true in this market when we're trying to expand our wealth potential, but also actuality, expand our ability to have real wealth. Let's look to what the big players are doing because the narratives they're sharing in the news oftentimes will be there to trigger those emotional traders. Jamie Dimon, key, case in point, he's saying all these things, how bad Bitcoin is, yet he's a participant, authorized participant on the BlackRock, uh, uh, BlackRock Bitcoin spot ETF. JP Morgan was also one of the largest individual buyers and investors in Bitcoin uh, in, in Europe over the last several years when he was saying how bad Bitcoin was. So do not listen to what they say. We can see with on-chain what they're doing. Whales are buying. The question is, what are you doing right now? Are you scared? And that means you're, that you don't deserve to have money. If you don't deserve to have the wealth that big money has, if you're not playing a similar type of game. Now, I honestly believe that every single one of you deserve to have everything that you do. But what you do is defined by what your actions are in this market right now. And the last most incredible, best opportunity of life-changing wealth the history of the world has ever seen. So, got a little sermon this morning. Let's talk about it. Capital flow still absolutely to the upside. We still have a room for a dip. If we look at previous cycles, we have gone positive and come back to that zero line, come back to that zero line, and then launched. Okay, we went positive, came back to the zero line once, went positive. We have not come back to that zero line again. We don't have to come back there. But the point of this is that if we get a dip and we still see, oh, man, this is still very positive money flow, capital flow into this ecosystem, nothing to worry about. You can use data to provide you the tools that can give you confidence on what decisions you're making. Now, this is still the name of the game, negative money flow, or, or, money flow, essentially, global liquidity. Global liquidity is still trickling down. I do expect at some point uh, this year that this will likely bottom and start moving back up. Is it going to be... In the next month or two, is it going to be all the way in September when the rate cuts happen? Is it go when is it going to be? Who knows? All we can do is, is, is stack into Valhalla, right? Now, we do see a lot of big money. It has been moving some coins. How do we know this? On-chain data. VDD. The, this is not an STD. This is the value days destroyed, okay? This shows when older coins move, you're destroying a lot of days. This sounds arbitrary, but here's what it is. If I give you a Bitcoin and you hold it for a thousand days and then you sell that Bitcoin, then that Bitcoin is now a newly held coin and you just destroyed a thousand days of hold behavior. Does that make sense? Throw one in chat if that makes sense. What this does is it provides us the ability to see when a bunch of older coins are moving because you can see that a lot of stored held days have now been rotated to a new holder. Does that make sense? So what we can see here, and the reason why this is so important is because the strength of a price level can be very heavily understood by the ratio of long-term holders to short-term holders. And when you have a lot of long-term holders selling, it doesn't mean the market trend is over. We see, look, a lot of this gets red. This means there's a lot of old, uh, older Coins that were bought much lower. A lot of coins are moving here. Price action still had a huge way to the upside because this is when you start entering what's called the, the, re the reflexivity hype cycle, this huge impulse to the upside where everybody FOMOs into the top. Well, who are they buying from? If you have to buy, that means somebody sold. Well, if somebody's selling in the strength of a trend, that type of behavior comes from smarter money Older money, money that's been holding for some time, they're taking profits into the strength of the trend. So they're making money while somebody's FOMOing into a trend. Unfortunately, this is how market cycles work. So there's going to be people that are going to be buying tops 
And as much as that is sad, you actually still want that because that is one of the mechanisms that drives these market cycles. You have to have a buyer paired for every seller. And every time you have a seller, you have a buyer. So we can see the behavior that we are coming into a little contentious territory in terms of a lot of old money has uh, been selling. But we can also see right here when this happened, we still had, you know, from, what is this, 23,000 all the way up to 70? Still had quite a ways to go. And again, I still think that this market cycle was cut short. When this first spiked here, 2,000 up to 20,000, there's still a 10X from there. This is signaling we're entering, we're starting to enter that part of the trend where things are going to get exciting and it's going to be scary if you don't have a plan. And I hope you yeah, follow us here, hit that like button, you ding the bell. We're going to try to keep you on the right side of the trend here and out of your emotions. We have to acknowledge our emotions, but we got to let them go. Now looking right here, the winds have shifted since the last halving. This right here, available supply. Since this last halving, We've been having a downturn. All the previous history up until the last halving, we've had an aggregate uptrend in new supply. Why? Because we mined and produced and had a new issuance of from zero to over 19 million Bitcoin in this time period. It's going to take another 130 years or something some odd till 2140 or something, something ridiculous until the, next, the last 2 million Bitcoin are mined. But we just reached a turning point in this last halving cycle. Back here, uh, what was this date? Uh, April 27th, 2020. That we getting a, a, just uh, a de declining available supply. Part of this is two factor. Part of it has to do with the cut in supply of the new issuance. Part of it has to do with uh, the behavior of holders moving coins off of exchange and people becoming more aware of what this asset is and saying, Oh, this is something I hold into the future. At some point in the near future, Bitcoin is going to be the equity chip by which you can utilize to take loans against to buy a house rather than selling it. At some point, it's going to be one of those coveted assets that it's something you use as collateral for other things in your life rather than selling it. And people are becoming aware of that. So we're seeing this reduction in supply compounded now with another cut of that new supply happening uh, here in a matter of days, 10, day, 10 days or so. So this is positive. This is all, this should all in the middle of a dip. Look at this video, watch what I'm showing you here. Cause we're seeing the foundation for the most bullish case for the next decade. Plus, not just this cycle. Let's understand what we're dealing with here. It is an opportunity to make money a lot quicker than many other, almost any other asset space in history. But it comes at a cost of you understanding what you're doing and not falling whim, falling to the whims of the narratives uh, of the media machine that's out there. Uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you're giving me a follow here at Kelly Kellum, K-E-L-L-Y, K-E-L-L-A-M. There's only one of me. There's a lot of fake accounts out there. And make sure you're following here at Academy BitLab. Now let's go ahead and talk about these levels. I want it to be bullish. I want it to push up. I want the price action to go up, up and away. It's so much more fun and exciting, but let's look at opportunity costs here. Do you want to have more opportunity to buy before this runs away? If we're looking at all this on-chain data and we see the data stacked in favor of higher prices coming in the very near future, don't we want the opportunity to stack if we get a dip? Well, this heat, uh, liquidation heat map here suggests that yes, we did wash down into this zone, but it does suggest there's, look at this, not really much very hot areas, meaning all the color, very kind of dim up here. We have a huge amount of liquidity directly below us down here, starting at about 67.3, coming down here to 69, uh, 66.9, uh, it, it, all the way through the zone would be down to 66.350. So we need to pay attention to the fact that there is a lot of liquidity, which can be attractive and and the price action regularly will move into these zones. But when we look over here, we know that's there. But when we look at this liquidation levels map right here, we do see we're kind of middle of the road here. We do have a negative premium here. Let's actually put, put this up here. Advanced filter, max liquidity. And shout out to High Block, by the way, High Block Capital. Uh, they uh, great tool. And they've got a lot of charting stuff I'm going to be showing you all as well. Some really cool charts uh, they have a integrated trading view here on the site that has some very unique stuff that you can't even, you can't get on trading view. And I'll be uh, exploring that and sharing that with you all very soon. This does look like it's low. 
We want it to wipe back up. Windshield wiper method, right? Goes back and forth. But we still have all, this is very similar to that other liquidation map I just showed you. We still have all this liquidity right down here in this zone. This is that, that 66.9, 66.3 zone. This is, is this negative enough? It's only minus 12. We've seen it get, you know, positive, positive and negative in the plus, plus or minus 15 is where you start to get a very aggressive move, likely uh, sort of slingshotting back the other direction. So this may be a little bit of a relief rally. We may have a little bit lower, but what do the charts show? We got to remember the CME futures gap. We have not cleared this gap yet. We have cleared this one now, and we're getting a little bit of a rest, a little bit of a respite, but you know, relief up into the zone. But look at the weakness here, the weakness of the price action bouncing up into the zone, and we can't even clear this high right here, which is 69, 69, 885. Little relief, looking like it's kind of like when you drop a tennis ball, boom, 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 right? So bounce, bounce. Is this going to, we want to pay attention to this area. This area, essentially, if we lose the 68,000 mark, which is this, this line that's coming across right in here, if we lose the 68,000 mark, I do think we're going to be coming down and clearing this CME futures gap, which is, you know, in line. It's, it, it cuts through the liquidity that we just showed on that macro chart with, the, what is it, 66, 66, 9 down into the 68s. Uh, let's actually look at it. So 60... I want to see, I want to see the price. Yeah. So 66, this comes down 68 down into the 66, the bottom side is 65. So, so 66, this would come down and yeah. So coming down into the zone. But the question is, if we come down here, is there going to be um, enough bullish pressure to defend this area when you have this area, these areas that tend to get filled and the gap really starts, let's put a line right here because we've already cleared some of this gap coming down to about this level. So the gap really starts right there, 60, basically 65,000, 65,000 down to 64.2. Will we get it? Who knows? But we know that, that that liquidity magnet may be down there sucking things down into that level. Now, this is the patterns. Looking at the patterns on this chart, these are the levels. There's a lot of levels on here because there's a lot of things that could be happening uh, in the near future with this price action. If we're able to bounce in this zone, excellent. Excuse me. This would be excellent if we can hold support in the zone, push back up, work our way up, and then move up from here. If we do wash out, I, there is a possibility here. Sorry. There is a possibility here because we've seen this over and over again on these charts where the price action whipsaws up, bull trap, comes down, gets people committed, and then starts to bounce, traps them again, and then we get a whipsaw to the downside, back up, something like this. This would flush out liquidity in both directions. This, to me, probably would be the best thing to happen. Unfortunately, the most people are going to get hurt if this happens. I don't want that, but it's just that what would happen if this were to take place is this would clear out that liquid, that all that open interest because we were just had record highs of open interest, meaning record highs of number of people b b uh, placing deriv derivatives uh, uh, trades on exchange. If we do this, this clears that out, and then you get back to a healthy very healthy price action because it's driven by spot, meaning people buying one to one, one dollar for one dollar worth of Bitcoin versus one dollar with thirty x, right? And then you have liquidation levels and you know all these things that are sort somewhat inflating the volatility of the market. If we lose this sixty three three area, I do think we're going to be coming down and test that short term holder cost basis down here at fifty eight, uh, fifty eight two, fifty eight thousand two hundred dollars. Now. Let's see. We got uh, Mark Dutch in the house. I always love to see it. He said, I'd love to see $54,000 first. Well, let me ask every single one of you here. Let's take a little bit of a community engagement thing here. What would be the optimum price that you would want to see? Reasonable. Don't say $12,000. What's the optimum price that you'd want to see on Bitcoin for this dip to go to? Are you, are you satisfied with where it's at here in the uh, 68 eight sort of range are you looking for a level on your charts down to 67 two are you looking for 58 do you think it's going to go down to 48 i'm curious what you all think yeah but the momentum is too bullish right now might not see below 58 for another year you know what that's true maybe we'll never see it again it's all going to be dependent on how high we go 
and what the composition of the type of uh, investors and traders are involved in the market over this next uh, over this next year year plus. So let's go head back over here. Let's look at these uh, charts a little bit longer. I want to also point out that we do have this high and this sort of low range where this bounced and this bounced. We may chop sideways within this and this whipsaw up and back down and back up and coming back down through this halving might be something that we need because we have talked about this in the last several streams. This 37 days roughly that we're at now, very, very, very eerily similar. I got to bring it up again. I'm sorry. There's always different people watching these streams, and we got to keep them in the know. This level right here, what is it? Previous all-time high. Boom. Price action did what? It came up to the previous all-time high and consolidated under it. About 31 days. It's actually a little shorter than this. We could do this uh, actually about, about like that, about 29, 30-ish days. We'll call it that. And then it broke out. And of course, we've already talked about this, but this is the same thing. It's coming up to that previous all-time high. Yeah, we overshot a little bit. Excuse me. We overshot a little bit, but we're consolidating. Consolidating doing, we're consolidating doing the same thing we've done in previous cycles. This is in addition to what we showed here with this breakdown point right here from this where this the market just fell out down to the down to the low. The 1.618 is right where we're trading. So there's multiple different things that say not only previous price action, not only past cycle, but also the normal behavior of how markets interact. We're doing all the, those things. Now, given, ignore the short-term holder cost basis. Let's just look at this rising channel that we have here that we uh, were in for quite some time. You know, basically, uh, well, let's say it's from here all the way to here. That is 422 days in this rising channel. Great. Now we've pushed up. Let's ignore the fact that the short-term alter cost basis is, is about right here. Let's do a line. That's uh, roughly about where the short-term alter cost basis is. We also have this rising channel. This is important to look at. So we have this rising previous resistance that was flipped to support right here. And look, there is an intersection of about where the short-term alter cost basis is and where this is. So this starts looking like an attractive region to potentially look for some price action coming down into this zone. And this tells us that we have some bullish support levels that are below us. Now let's go ahead and turn on the 4MA. Let's, let's turn on a, a, something a little brighter. Okay, so let's go, that's on the three day, let's go on the weekly. So on the weekly chart here, look at this. On the BitLab trading stack, the trend signal line is now risen all the way up here to right where this, I'm exactly on this line. So we're seeing a couple indications in this zone. Now what I'm telling you here is not that I, I think it's going here. What I'm telling you is if the price does dip further, we have known levels. On this case, we're looking on the weekly, the macro levels that suggest that this would be a great buying opportunity if it does dip into this zone. Rather than being scared, oh my God, it went from 70 to 70 to, to 53, or what price would this be? 54 or five. So if it dipped to 55, we know that it's a great buying opportunity. And because we looked at all this other data on the on-chain and understand what's, what's going on here, even if it dipped below this, that just gives us more opportunity to buy. Now, let's talk about the bullish case. You guys want to hear some bullish news. Let's talk about the bullish TA here. Well, let's get back over to this other chart. Let's talk about some bullishness here. Chat, okay. Uh, uh, all right, so this is not what I want to look at. Where are we at? Boom, right here. All right, so let's delete this red line because we're feeling bullish now. So we are seeing, we still have this pennant, this uh, symmetrical triangle in play, but there's also another way to look at this. There's also potential that we have a sort of rising channel here. Uh, and what we want to watch here, in either way, that this is kind of kind of tell the same story. The trend that we've seen over this last year and a half, uh, yeah, it's uh, almost a year and a half now, uh, since January 2023, is up and to the right. We've had some dips, 20% dip, 20% dip, 20% dip, but this is higher lows, oops, higher lows all the way through, and this is starting to go aggressively 
starting that parabola a bit, as you can see. So the bias in the chart right now, not me, the bias in the chart is going to be bullish. Anything that's happening right now, I'd say until we broke below about $38,000, would ultimately be quite bullish. And why did I say 38? Because if we come over here, and my number could be wrong, but let's, let's just actually, let's go to this chart so we can see what the hell we're doing. Option F. Uh, yeah, 38, look at that, right at 38,000, the golden pocket. That's when things starting to get, that's when things really start to get scary. I'd be worried under this zone right here. I'd start getting worried in terms of the short time frame, but it's ultimately still quite bullish uh, at this zone. It's still going to be bullish coming all the way down to this golden pocket and then bouncing from there. That would, that would represent probably a huge downward price action in the stock market as well if that were to happen. So I'm not planning in any way on that. I just know this level is here. When we're looking at this level, as, as we see it, remember, we are leaning bullish because of the macro trend right now and all this capital flow. So when we look at this, get down to the four hour, let's be cognizant that we could have washouts in both directions. If this does wash out and come down here and then bounce, excellent. But as it stands right now, we're getting money flows getting very neutral here. You see how it's blue and purple and it comes here. It's, it is flipping back and forth, but it's gray because there's not much movement on the money flow right now. On this chart but what we can see remember we're going bullish what we can see is that the stochastics have come all the way down here they're starting to round about we can also see that this uh the, the the rsi has come down here i'm getting a call right now while i'm live on air all right uh we can see this the rsi is coming down and starting to find a little bit of support why do i say that we have a little bit of bounce there and then this downtrend right here and it's starting to round so this is starting to show some signals of maybe potential bottoming behavior. So we're going to want to pay attention to what happens over the rest of this week because I think there's going to be a little bit of shakeout of what the certainty level is on what's happening with the CPI data and what directions the markets are going to go. But bullishly, we're still within this range. And if we can push up, and this is a key level we're watching right now on the short term, on a bullish level, once we push up, we want to watch between the 69.8 and the 70,200 uh, 70, zone because we have the trend signal line directly above us and the weekly VWAP. We are not bullish and cannot be on this smaller time frame. This is a two-hour time frame. It will be the same on the four because this weekly VWAP is not going to change. Um, we're not in a bullish posture on these medium or smaller time frames until we get the price action back above this zone. And if we move above this, we want to watch for the price action to come back and test it in some regard and then continue up. And the next level we're really watching is can we take out this previous high? Because once this happens, I think it's going to kick the engines back into gear, the excitement, the positive root flexivity, all those things we want to see if we're expecting things to go higher. Now, let's talk about a couple other coins. Let's talk about, uh, I did have a list here. Let me scroll back. Uh, all those that were here very, very early before the stream started, I asked them what they wanted to look at, and I'm going to look at them for them. We had Alexander G, uh, Daniel Huang, uh, Hong, uh, Hong or Hoon, uh, Manan Meta, and uh, there's somebody else that said something. Those are the one. Those are the those are the people that were here early and gave some suggestions on coins to look at. So let's look at them. Ethereum. We got to look at Ethereum because it's the you know the big daddy altcoin. It is an altcoin. Remember that. All right. So this is looking very similar, kind of chopping about. Remember, we talked about yesterday if this could potentially form a bit of an inverted head and shoulders here, right? Which if this is the case, we can draw from the neckline down to the base there, drag this out, and the target there would be up here in this $4,200 range. But sometimes that can be a little bit too optimistic, right? We can see it starting to form, but let's let it form before we take a trade on that narrative. If we lose the level we're at now, which would be basically the bottom of the shoulder of it possibly being a shoulder, if we lose this level and come down, I do think we're coming down here to this 3,200. See how different these opportunities can be? Oh, okay, we see the target up here is 4,200. Well, if it loses this level, our target's down here at 3,200. And if we lose that, price may be giving a little bit more downside price action, but we already have levels in play for that 
if that were to happen. But I'm looking, if this does get lost, I'm looking uh, for an opportunity to buy in this $32 to $3,300 level. Remember, we still have the ETH ETF right around the corner. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? All sources that I'm seeing are suggesting it's less likely to happen in this May time frame uh, like people want it to. Because there's been, uh, as uh, Eric Baltuna says, and James Safart shouted out, silence is violence. And there's been no, there's been no real uh, interaction between the SEC and these uh, various ETH ETF participants as to notes, as to comments, as to all this stuff. So it's looking less, less likely uh, that it's going to uh, be something that happens. So we're going to want to pay attention to the zone, but we are seeing this area uh, hold support if we can do that. And, you know, maybe, maybe we'll be forming uh, an ascending triangle with a rising level of support, somewhat of a flat level, somewhat of a flat level of resistance. Okay. Come on. There we go. A little bit of a deviation here, but that's okay. Maybe we maybe we chop in this range. Remember, Kevin Svensson pointed this out, and I shared this on Discover Crypto. Everybody's forgetting about this right here. This dotted line is a suggestion about a possibility. Everybody's saying, oh, it's either going to go down or up. This is very likely right now with everything on the horizon with the ETF and people wondering if we're going to get a sell-off like we've seen in the past, but also seeing a huge amount of capital flow and we're not getting it. This is what drives this uncertainty, this speculative chop back and forth until a narrative wins over the majority of the crowd. You know a narrative won over the majority of traders by that narrative taking off. Okay, the bears took the majority here, down. The bulls took it here, but it was short-lived, back down. We're watching the narratives play back and forth. So now let's look over at Ondo. This was a request from Alexander G. We got into it down here, came back, bounced it, moved all the way up here. This is looking a little bearish and bullish at the same time, but it's, this is looking a little bearish because we have almost like a little shoulder here, a big head here, almost like a little shoulder here. If this is the case, if this is the case, Measure that down to this neckline, right? What's the neckline? It's the point at which things are bouncing. Bounce, bounce, bounce. So the measurement here would suggest a target down here. If we do, if we do lose that, which that would be a pretty, uh, yeah, that'd be a target down here in the 50 to 53 cent range. If this, if the markets do have that collective pullback, if we do get a little bit of a whipsaw, and this is just a liquidity flush out then we're looking to this low right here, and this gives us a secondary target that's much shorter than that, much more bullish, which is right here in this uh, 69 to 70 cent range. This is if the market takes that bearish pill. If we're able to find support here and push up, our target directly above us that we'd be looking at is 86 cents. And if we could take that out, I think, I think if we take this out, I think this is starting that next leg to the upside. So those are the levels I'm seeing on Ondo. Uh, now, what does it say on the indicators? Yeah, look at that. So the first step between that, again, would be this weekly VWAP right here at 79 cents. So if we do find support here and push up, and look, see this wick? The bulls ate this back up. So if we can find support here and push up, we've got to clear 79 cents, and then the next stop is 86 cents, and then that's, just, that's the stair step we want to take if we want to see bullish price action. Now, next one, ADA, and then ICP, and then LINK. Tony, you guys, you guys come participate on this channel. I reward you, man. Cardano, let's actually get over to our chart. Uh, I have a chart. It's going to have so many lines on it. But there's a lot of things going on here. All right. So, we have this point to this point coming out to this point. This gives us this area. And look, it is a valid area because the price action came up and rejected at it. As it stands right now, what I want as a bull is for this to find support here and move up like this and do something like this. We can't know if that's going to happen or not yet. That would be a double bottom here, suggesting that rollover with the price action going back up. If the market takes that big swing to the downside, that market takes a big swing to the downside. This is the next level I'm looking at right here. Come on. Okay, click, mother. <laughs> there you go. I'm looking at this level down here in the 54 cent range, 54 to 53 cent. 
we lose that, then I do think we're coming quite a bit lower. Um, but this would be an awesome buying opportunity for Cardano. It's seeing all this FUD right now that's completely unfounded. I love Cardano. They've been, you know, silently building and doing wonderful things out there. Now, in terms of a trend line to the uh, upside, if this does bounce to the upside, we have to contend not only with the weekly VWAP, 59, 50, uh, 60 cents, but also basically 60 cents because this trend line that comes, this descending trend line resistance coming up into the zone, this is going to be a contentious area between 59 and 60 cents. If we can take that out, then the next level up here is 63 cents, and then the next level is going to be all the way up here into the 70 cent sort of range. And I'd be looking about the cross section of where this top is and this level right here, about 68 to 70 cents. ICP. When you guys hang around after this, I'm going to uh, do a traffic redirect. If Tommy Boy is live, Mr. Tom Crown, I'll send uh, redirect traffic over to his page. We can all roll in there and raid in together, drop some lab coats, say, what's up? Fit Lab crew is here showing love to Tom Crown. He just got over uh, 100,000. By the way, shout out to every single one of you here that has hit that like button and hit that subscribe button, especially if you ding the bell, because we, about a year was it? We launched uh, into January, so February last year until now, April. We're already at 20, over 20,000, uh, like 21,000 something subscribers. And under a year, I, I mean, I'm so honored by all of you. I'm glad. I hope you guys like content I'm putting out. Try to give you non-biased, real tools, real resources, and positive community. No drama. No S-talking. The only S-talk I'll do is to the government. If you can get behind that, hit that like button. So uh, ICP is what we're looking at next. ICP. Yeah, you know me. ICP. There we go. All right. Now let's delete some of this old TA. Boom. All right, we can delete some of this. I haven't looked at this in a while, apparently. All right. So looking like this has lost this, it's lost the plot. It's kind of got a little bit of a descending channel here, though, which is not, not too bad. This is actually looking quite good. So kind of a bull flag here on ICP. So if this is the case, let's go bullish first, and we'll look at the then we'll look at the safe options. If this is the case, then the target on here is up here at the $32 mark. 100 percent move if things turn bullish for the market. As it stands right now, as bullish as I am, I still feel like there's going to be a little bit of a washout at some point. So what we're looking at here with ICP, negative money flow, VWAP's coming up and finding resistance right here at this zero line. See what I mean? It's starting, starting to come up. See how it's starting to arc over towards the zero line, meaning that the, it's starting to indicate that they may want to play a negative spread a bit further. But at the same time, we're seeing the stochastics round out and we're seeing the RSI round out as well. There may be uh, an impulse for a bit of a bounce here. We're watching these two levels right here. They're together too, trend signal line and the VWAP, which is right here at the 16, 1630 to 1670 sort of range. Oh, sorry, 1670 to 60, 1680 range. If we can push up and take this out, then we can contend with the 1767. This, this is this descending resistance line on this channel we could talk about further price action if we break out of that but we are in this descending channel and this may bounce up it will tell you who's in charge on a bounce if this can't even clear and we can do a full option f Fibonacci. so look at that golden pockets right in this region too if this bounces up and rejects anywhere below this vwap the bears are in control and they're going to come down and test this line down here again that's how you can read what's going on here. Now let's look at uh, Link and then TDRM. And then I got a roll, baby. Uh, shout out to everybody that is a BitLab member in the premium members area. We do have a member stream tomorrow. It is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Joshua and I, if you are a BitLab member here on YouTube, you'll get access to that as well. Uh, we have issues live streaming those through the Discord with screen sharing and such. Um, but, uh, so I'm going to be doing them through the BitLab YouTube and the people on Discord are going to get a link. It's an unlisted link. So you got to join uh, to get uh, access to that link to watch it. But we're going to be, we're going to be breaking down some, some magic tomorrow. Uh, Chainlink, Chainlink consolidating a little bit with a bearish rollover price action right in here. We're kind of looking 
This is looking like it wants to test into this zone down here at 1643. If we lose this area, again, down to 1544. If we can find support here, and this is looking bearish. This is, look, an inverted cup and handle. Cup, handle. The target on this right here would be come down, boom, move this across. The target on this would actually be even lower down here at the 1450 sort of range. But these are the levels I'm looking at. I'm thinking that the washout to the downside is going to be more of a bear trap than anything so i'm looking for buying opportunities and i'm okay if they get overshot uh and then i get a deeper buying opportunity if we can bounce here where we're at right now and form a w formation a a, a double bottom down down uh, like this bears tried bulls brought her back bears tried they can't get lower bulls take over that's what a w formation is same as an m formation double top bulls tried bears brought her back bulls tried again can't take it higher bears take control and we talk about all this in the BitLab Academy and the trading uh, uh, candle patterns and uh, uh, you know strategies and all this. So, uh, and by the way, we have got. Let me say this before we go. I got one more chart to do. We have got an incredible thing that we're going to be launching for everybody: new members, old members, people that have been on the fence, people that the best setup deal, everything that we've ever offered. It's going to be tied to the Bitcoin having. So stay tuned for that. I would actually even encourage you. Uh, to not sign up for our services right now because you're going to get the, the best best opportunity, best uh, uh, access that we've ever offered. So stay tuned for that. I will be letting you know uh, as soon as we get uh, all the back-end stuff in line for that. Uh, and it's for everybody. If you're already a member, we're going to have everybody re-sign up uh, at a... <laughs> uh, you're gonna, it's it's, it's going to be very beneficial for all of you. So stay tuned for that. Now, Link, we talked about it. If we get the W formation... Luckily, in this case, God dang it. Luckily, in this case, we have the VWAP much lower. So if this does push up into the zone and take out 1780, then I think we're going to uh, play up into this zone, this 1864, come back to test the weekly VWAP and then uh, have liftoff. And then the last one, I'm not even sure if I know what this one is TDRM. I do see people talking about it sometimes. TDRM, TRDM. TRDM. This is going to be, looks like a, a S coin. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if you got in on something like this, uh, if you got in something like this, it does look like it's consolidating. Uh, it's hard to do a TA on a meme coin. Uh, you know, this could just, the bottom could fall out of this. So I would just say, honestly, if, if this is something you bought here and it's up, uh, hold on to it. This is like, I don't like doing TA on something that uh, has this little data. Um, so, that's, all, that's what I got for you there. You could look into Dex tools and that sort of stuff uh, to talk about that. Uh, but just reminder, Dow Jones kind of rolling over. We might see some pressure on assets to the downside for a little bit. We also see, uh, 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 where is it at? Um, there we go. We also see NVIDIA having that M formation potential potentially targeting for the downside. But remember, there was a huge news story that came out yesterday uh, with a new partnership with NVIDIA and Google. Uh, where is that at? Uh, right here. So NVIDIA and Google Cloud have announced a new collaboration to help startups around the world accelerate the creation of generative AI applications. So we may, maybe this is just a little bit of a washout to the downside on NVIDIA. If not, the reason why I'm watching this is because this is going to be heavily tied to uh, it's going to impact the narratives in the AI field here in crypto. So let's just pay attention to that. But I'm bullish. I'm feeling good. Markets, uh, you know, kind of hovering around the same levels. Aerodrome, I think in the last 24 hours, let's refresh. Aerodrome uh, is uh, the only one that I think is up in the last 24 hours. Oh, no, Codex is now up a little bit. Uh, Aerodrome was up pretty significantly. Uh, Ordi swaps up. Everything else taking a little bit of a dip. It's okay. Sometimes if you're frustrated with it, go outside, touch some grass, enjoy the market, enjoy your friends and family. Remember, if you're doing all this and spending no time with your friends and family, don't let this become your only part of your life. We are here to communicate and connect with people and to help people and to love people and to talk to strangers and give them a smile and figure out ways that we can improve the passions that we have, whether it's music or dancing or live. That's all I got for you guys. Just let's, let's live our lives and also use the crypto and blockchain world as an aspect of something that can also improve it. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Let me see if Tommy boy 
Tom Crown is on. Let's all go, if you would, right now when I end this stream. It's going to automatically send us all over to Tom Crown. If, 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 if you just want to head there right now, go drop some BitLab uh, coats. Let's say BitLab is here. We love you. 100, 100K, congrats, Tom. And to all of you, I love you. I appreciate you. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and ding the bell on the way out. That's all I got. Adios, muchachos.